Hey, thanks for joining us on this week's Geek Storm. We don't know what we're going to cover this week because we didn't watch a movie. We didn't watch very much TV, but we read some comic books. Is so. it the, is it the all improv? Yeah, it's improv. Uh, episode. It, it's always improv. I would have at least. Like, we just make it look good. Lied about the whole we don't have anything to cover and then you know let them figure it out. So if you had done the intro, yeah. if you had, what, oh yeah, what, what, I, what, I told like, you guys. Hey, welcome to Come. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> hey, so guys, what's going on? And then so, I wouldn't have mentioned that we didn't have anything to talk about. That right. I would have like kind of glossed over. Just kind of shattered the illusion. Yeah. Uh, that that hey, fourth professional. Wall. I think you guys are shattering the illusion. I was just going to keep on Yeah, we're doing it in a fun way. So, um, Kokomo? What's going on in Kokomo? Tell us! Well, if you haven't um, gotten to the Kokomo Mall or whatever, Kokomo City Center. It is the city center. What everybody knows as the Kokomo Mall. They can try to slap a new name on it. It's like... The yeah. Ivy Tech thing is still the Johannic Civic Center. It's a big empty building on the on the movie side of the mall. Old Farmer. That's right. what it is. Mm-hmm. If you're really old a bit. Yeah. What about it, April? Uh, We're tearing it down? No. Huh. <laughs> if you haven't got in there to see the We Care Trees, um, definitely check that out. The auction. I'm not sure which one we're on. You're, that's your camera. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, so it's a tree auction. Yes, a tree and wreath so auction. I, yes, I just thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Which is this coming Sunday, the seventeenth, I believe, at three p.m. I think. So that's pretty cool. So who cut down all the trees? So they're, they're big trees. The idea is, it's they take a, each tree has a sponsor. Let's say right. Coke, let's say Comics Cube sponsor. They did because be they're, awesome. they're Grinches, but they would have filled that tree with things related to. A theme, whether it be about their store or whether it be they decide to do any random thing. Yeah, snowflakes. It doesn't puppy matter. Dogs. But but the I idea like is to dogs. make the tree uh, desirable to to, to bidders purchase. because right. it might have coupons, it might have uh, yeah. uh, prizes, it might have actual product on it, and then everybody will bid on that tree, and right. some of them go for a lot of money. Right. And the whole point is to wait the raise, raise money, money for, for <laughs> we care. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> But yeah, so it's pretty cool. So it's Sunday the 17th? Yeah. Two days from now? Yeah. Even if you're not interested in purchasing a tree, it's still really cool to go. A lot of people show up for this thing. It's a big deal. It's packed. Yeah. And I think they all, because there's so many people show up, there are also vendors there too selling selling things as well as uh, there's um, baked goods and stuff like that and crafts and whatnot. So it's a good way to help out the community. Yeah. Donate some money. Feel good about yourself if that's possible. He's touching his fingers. That makes sense. Something's going on. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, so, and uh, We Care supports many local um, charities. Charities. Mm-hmm. It's not just one. Such job. as? Many. Many, yeah. Good job, John. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Mike would have had notes. If it had been his story, Mike would have had notes. We, no, I left the notes, had had notes, I left a, the notes time. a long time ago because you start uh, A, A. Okay, also this cheat. Saturday <laughs> is... Um, at the Wallace Elementary of whatever performing arts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I am on it. <laughs> yeah, just continue like you know what yeah. you're talking about. Somewhere in the Kokomo time zone in school where children get educated. Yeah. Kokomo's not a time something zone, but go ahead with your story. About something. Kokomo is in a time a zone. There's a craft show. Did you notice her eyes? You got that, like, feeling Glitter? of a thing? Oh, yeah. Cat eyes. It's cat eyes. All right. <laughs> it's my new thing. <laughs> a new thing. All right. So, so Wallace Elementary School, located yes. somewhere in Kokomo, is doing on a Dixon and Jefferson. I Dixon and Jefferson. On what day? Saturday. Is doing a craft show. A winter. Winter craft show. Craft show. Okay. Um, Any other details on this craft show? <laughs> um, Are you setting friends. up? Are you going to be there? Are you going to do not, crafts? I'm not. Do your jewelries um, and things? No. Painting nails, painting nails blue? <laughs> Cat eyes? <laughs> Nothing? All right. I can't help it that I'm so talented. <laughs> <laughs> um, our, you know, uh, oh, our friends that do the duct tape and pottery things will be there. Oh, Just they work at Yeah. Yeah. They're so going to be, be there cool. selling yep. duct tape bell folds? Yep. And, and crafts. awesome pottery. Awesome pottery. I think it's, it's called. Gaelic plates. I think it's That's freaking awesome. Just in Just incredible, incredible pottery, I believe, is what it's yeah. called. Cool. And, and I'm my sticky his name business. Is Justin. It's my sticky yes. business, which is not the kind of business I thought it was. 
Turns out it's duct tape. Okay. Any other local things we need to talk about? That's about it. Okay, let's start the show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about Hey, some... everybody, welcome to, <laughs> welcome to Geek minutes, Store. Okay. Good job. Good job. That was April's five minutes. <laughs> we'll let you know when it's time no, to I'll just sit here off. and smile <laughs> the whole rest of the time. Uh, movies? We didn't go see a movie this week. There couple, wasn't... I mean, something nothing opened up, but Western. nothing we wanted to pay for. Nothing big blockbuster, yeah. Um, the only one that I know of of note was is called 12 Years a Slave. It's going to get a lot of uh, Oscar attention. Uh, it's supposed to be a very good mo movie about uh, an African-American gentleman back in the days of slavery who um, is a free man but is mistakenly captured as a slave again and his life trying to uh, get, out. get out again. And it's supposed to be pretty brutal, pretty, uh, pretty realistic too, but um, you'll see it get, I'm sure with the, with the number of nominees they have nowadays, you will see it get a, a Best Picture uh, nod. Okay. Yeah, just, I mean, I'm not, not to say it wasn't interesting, but... A lot of, I just I wasn't interested. Because we have to pay pay to see these movies that we, that we review. We don't get any free tickets or any passes or any you know one of these go ahead and going through nothing like that. No, uh, and we, we don't even always get good seats. No, no, not always. We get treated really well. We had to pay twenty five dollars to go to see the Thor marathon last so week. So if anybody so. can do anything about that, that'd be yeah. great. So after the fifty dollars that we spent last week, we had to take a week off because right. it wasn't in the budget to actually go and uh, well, I see that. that. Yeah. Any other movie movie news? Anything going on? They think they might have um, maybe got Wonder Woman cast right. for this uh, new Batman Superman movie. Yeah, but it wasn't the chick from from uh, Thor. So I don't no, it wasn't. Really I, I would like to see her, the one who played Sif. Yeah, I thought it, this, she was this girl is from Fast Seven or Fast Six or one of the Fast she's movies. She's yeah. fast. Yeah, she's fast. Wonder Woman's not fast. Yeah, I always thought Angie Harmon from uh, that Rosalian Isles. She's mm -hmm. kind of tall and and kind of just kind of chiseled looking. I always thought she'd be a good a good Wonder Woman. Um, yeah, I was kind of disappointed she would have been 15 years ago. that. Yeah. I thought, I mean, unless, I mean, I know they can do a lot with makeup and stuff. But. Sure. Uh, speaking of the fast movies, and it's uh, not oh my gosh. Really? I was like halfway through a sentence. <laughs> just keep talking then. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, it's, it's good you're coming out of your shell. The, uh, <laughs> um, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, is going to do a uh, new, another dramatic movie. This one he did last year called Snitch. Um, oh. didn't, didn't get a lot of uh, a lot of attention. Stupid ass idea. It, it was horrible. a great movie. And uh, but he's trying to move away from just being the solid action star. I mean, he's going to make his Hercules movies and you know the fast movies, but uh, this one is about remember uh, is your last year the year before there was a story about these uh, three football players that got uh, uh, they were out on on the ocean and their boat capsized and like three of the two of them died and only one survived. He's playing that. He's playing that guy. Survivor. Yeah, basically oh, a guy cool. on a, a guy on a boat, which I think is exactly the same movie that Robert Redford is doing this, uh, this right now too. A uh, guy on a boat, you know, capsizing type of thing. No tiger like the Life of Pi, but but uh, zero same. interest there for me. Okay. Zero. I mean, I'm what glad. are you interested in? I mean, I'm I'm, a, I'm an action adventure apathy. kind of guy. He's also, interested in apathy. I also like mysteries. Um, thrillers can do it for me. I'm not a big horror guy. Mm -hmm. I'm not a super huge comedy guy. I'm definitely not a family friendly. Let's go see the Crudes or there's some new one out this week or a week uh, or so ago. Some kind of wintry one. But what about turkeys? Trying to not. That's already oh, out. Oh, frost yeah, coming that's out right. like next week or something. Well, that's Pixar, so I'm going to see that. Pixar's yeah. a that's a that's a. Uh, that's the exception to the rule kind of thing. That, those are just well done. So good movies just basically whatever you feel like. Well, yeah, I mean, again, we already <laughs> said we're paying for it. If it's going to come out of my yeah. pocket, I'm not going to go see crap I don't want to see. So not unless well, I think I it's actually going to have some kind of significance. Necessarily... There's not a whole lot coming out. I mean, we would mentioned before we went on air that Hunger Games 2 comes out next week. I'll go see that. I watched oh. the first one, and I read the first book. I haven't read the second book yet. I'll, I'll tr maybe try to cram the second book in. In the next two days, that should be as long as it takes to read that thing. I can't believe it's going to take more than a couple of hours. I'm sick of these young adult uh, novels being thrown against the Hollywood wall to see what sticks, and maybe we get a sequel out of it. You know, uh, Hunger Games is like that for me. And um, it was like for you, but it wasn't like it for anyone else. I'm just saying for I mean, me. That, that I thing, can't speak for everybody else. I think came out with a three movie deal in the in the pocket. I mean, the second movie. I'm just saying. Coming out. Well, no, you were you were saying like it's it would okay. be thrown we against the wall, the as point. if it were you know it was situations where we weren't sure whether they were going to do a sequel or not. The Hunger Games they were doing a sequel, whether anything was going on or not. They had that. Uh, what was the one? I am number People seven or I am number nine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's, that one. I agree. Okay, I, I don't think Hunger Games meets. You're talking about you know in the stratosphere of whatnot. I am I am whatever the hell the number is is down here. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Hunger Games, I think budget wise, production wise, who they've got in these films is like way the hell up here. So that's a, I mean, 
That's you're right. That's like the Hammer film. Then you can stop Low it. budget you crap. Said, you're right. That's where you should. So, stop but it yeah, but you have to you have to actually explain why you're we right. We still have like 20 more minutes to fill, so he's all right. <laughs> There's a clock right there. I know. We Either know way, time we have. so that's coming out. It's going to do huge money. I don't think anybody wanted to go up against Thor in second week. Thor is going to do incredibly well. It's going to it's going to rule the box office again. Thor made astronomical amounts of money. It did. It came in a lot lower than I thought it would, though. I really thought Thor had a chance of doing 100 million. It broke based. some weird uh, Thursday, Friday record, non-weekend record, or something. It so broke, we're just it making broke up fake records now. It's I know. like for guys that weigh over 200 pounds <laughs> that have red hair. It's like a participation <laughs> award in, in Little League or something. Yeah, it's like we're gonna give them but something. It did really do good business. Yeah, it made a lot of money. I, I, but I really thought it could do right at 100. Especially because they were doing that five-minute preview on Cap right. on the 3D, which is going to just skyrocket the right. amount of money that thing was bringing in. It, I mean, still respectable. Made more than its first one did, so mm -hmm. made more than I think some of the other Marvel movies did. Very respectable numbers. I think it's going to usually you top out and then go down anywhere from 30 to 50 percent. You know, if you're bringing in 30 percent of your original audience to 50 percent, I think this is going to have a really strong second week. Probably will. Probably do another. I think it'll stick really high 50s. It'll get some repeat. So. It'll, it'll, yeah. it'll get some people that'll go see it a second I time. I saw right it twice. Away. I took my mom to see it, and she really enjoyed it. Did she? Yeah. And, I mean, there's, a, and I was taking a little bit of a nap in the first uh, big fight on Asgard. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, I mean, it was just, I was tired. Mm -hmm. But really, it, it was it was well watchable. Oh, yeah, and there's, there's like a t Easter eggs now popping up. They're showing like if you look in the background, but some of these trees are just like stupid. One I saw was the, uh, the raven. Mm -hmm. It's like, you'll notice there's a raven. I'm like, right. yeah, we all saw the raven. There's two, like two ravens at the very But they beginning. do point out that those are in every single Marvel movie that Thor's in. And I didn't, I was like, now that I thought about it. They're they like characters out. in the Marvel mythos, right? Yeah, they talk to, they're basically Odin's yeah. spies. I can't remember their names, they have names. I can't yeah, remember I can't, are. I mean, it's probably like Eyeball Nasher or something. They, they, <laughs> they really do have names like that, it's something weird, but. Um, Regardless, so they pointed out that was one of these strings was they were in this movie. And I'm like, yeah, we all saw them. And they pointed out they were in the Avengers movie. They were in Thor 1. So when Thor and Loki or land on the little mountaintop, right. they go zooming by. Right. So you had that. Um, in the background on the chalkboard, when the guy's like nuts and uh -huh. you had Stan Lee cameo, there's a little thing that says 616 Universe. And there's another thing that says something about the, uh, the Thanos universe that just happened. Um, so that was kind of interesting. There's little things like that, but... Still no, I still have not received any word why Hogan is like practically not in this movie. Still bumps me out, but. I don't think you will. I'll so. let you find out. Oh well. Caught up on Green Arrow. Maybe one, on one, I might be one behind, but that's really pretty good. Except the chick they've got playing Black Canary, man. Uh -huh. She's got a butt on her face. I'm not cool with that. <laughs> what do you mean? She's got like this huge, like Left Stallone chin. style dimple thing mm -hmm. on her chin. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's huge. Mm -hmm. And then they, obviously they replaced the young lady from the first season who's in all the clips where, you know, because it's a completely different woman. Mm -hmm. uh, I love Black Canary. I like the story. But at this point, you know, it's funny because we're always saying, you know, he's got the hood. How does nobody know who he is? Now, let me get this straight, guy. Your daughter's dead. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. She's gone for five years. She pops back up. And when she pops up, you know instantly, wait a second, you're the masked vigilante that's kicking ass and just showed up recently right. when these other things happened. Right. That guy in the green hood. Five years pops. No, no, he's no. he stays in the shadows. He's got black, right? Yeah. Here. And if you look at me, I do this. Okay, that's my disguise. So, I, do that. I, I mean, at this point, it's, it's kind of getting funny. Right. But I will say that the the gentleman who plays uh, Green Arrow, mm -hmm. very active on his Facebook page, and is like interacting with the fans, is putting up little clips, is talking about stuff. Mm -hmm. Very fun, and, and nothing serious either. Like, like, hey, today was the day we filmed this, and there's love my job, but nothing like staying up till you know 8 a.m. from right. the night before filming a fight scene where I punch the same guy over and over again. And that's that's actually the aspect of the show that I am liking much better with the addition of Black Canaries because you get a lot more the hand-to-hand -hand fighting and the, and the uh, interaction between the two of them and as they fight a group or whatever is very good. Um, I mean, you saw you'd see Arrow once in a while use his bow. Uh, in, in a fight, in a hand-to-hand -hand fight, but you can only watch a guy shoot so many arrows. I sure. mean, it's not, it's not interesting anymore. So uh, I really like that aspect of it. And she, whoever the stunt woman is, and she is breaks really, like two really necks, good. like yeah. right in front of dad and right, him. Right. But and, and getting continuity wise, last year Huntress like wanted to kill some people. Right. And he's like, no, not in my town. Right. You've got, I'll shoot them through the head with right. an arrow, but you can't. So I'm just like, 
Okay. And then they've got a little mini series now in like a two minute clip thing. Yeah, it's called, commercial, it's a promotional thing. Yeah, for, I mean it was, and this one was pretty pretty rough because they even show like her doing some headset thing or right. something. It's right. like bows. Right, that's what it was. It was bows. And uh, but the first one had Speedy showing up to like talk to mm -hmm. Oliver, and I think there's a second one. I haven't seen it yet, but it looks pretty cool. So that's going on. Ratings wise, I'm under the impression it's doing well. Supposedly they're saying the Tomorrow People is doing fairly well, but that could just be the studio. Talking. I still haven't watched it. It's got a good lead in with Arrow, so we're talking. Okay, let's get are into those two, Wait, are those two dudes related? What two dudes? The the Air, the guy that plays Arrow, Stephen Amell, Amell, Omar, I think so, like yes. in real life. And then yeah, in real life, the, the, the guy that's the star of the Tomorrow People. Is his name Arnell? I don't know, but they look they look identical to me with different hair well, color. It might be just like a taste in a casting. Could be. Person. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll look that up for you. <laughs> so and then uh, we were talking before we got going about Marvel's Agents of Shield mm -hmm. and how. The ratings seem to be taking a dip, but and you'd sent me a really interesting article mm -hmm. about why it's probably a very, very safe series, even though it had taken this really big dip. Right. It's uh, it's still winning, winning or getting second in its time slot, uh, and that's that's got more to do with the guys that put those slots together. You know, there's they have like you've seen them on TV before. They have a big board with Monday through Monday through Sunday on it, and it's like. Fantasy League football for television right. shows. Right. Yeah, we're, and and there are some slots that are called the death slots. You know, it's like know. Fridays, Fridays and like eight yeah. to ten. Or when something. when they're when they're pretty much done with the show and they need to just run it out the rest of the way, they, they move it to Friday. And uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's doing really well ratings wise, even though fan wise, people are talking about not liking it. Uh, uh, well, they some did from the beginning, and, and that's that's a matter of taste, I suppose. But I think it's getting better. Uh, the last two episodes have been has been much better, and. Um, uh, I think people just need to hang on a little bit longer. If you remember, okay, if you're a fan, okay, we're talking about Whedon, the guy that created this show. Sure. The first season of Buffy really wasn't very good, okay? Now, I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer, sure. the show. I love Angel, the show. Sure. But the first, I want to say, six or seven episodes of both those series were pretty, pretty awful, uh, even for that day. It takes, I think it takes a while to be attached to a character and to care about whether or not he's in, right. in fake danger or not. But it's kind of a different, sorry. Yes, April, kind you go right ahead. I'm sorry, Sean. Kind of nothing. Yet. It's a different time, though, now. Like, when Buffy came out, mm -hmm. your only choice was to watch a show um, as it was released on television. Correct. But now you have things like Netflix. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you be patient enough to want to stick with an with the show. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, April. So, I mean, what I, don't know. I, I think there's a couple different things when it comes to Marvel Agents of Shield. Yes, people are talking like, oh, I don't like it, I don't like it. I think some of that is based it's really upon. It's like stoic, I think, sir. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't ever apologize for interrupting him. Keep awesome. going, John. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think, I think you have this thing where yes, they're bad mouthing it a little bit, but that's also, I think, based on premature expectations. People wanted it to be so good. Right. They wanted to walk in. They wanted to see Captain Thor every, every every episode. Yeah, you know? it, it was never on the right. it was never on the table. Right. Quite frankly, the fact that they got a Samuel Jackson cameo by like the third episode right. was surprising mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Also, I think you know the thing about demographics and ratings that that doesn't come up a lot is not all ratings and demographics are equal. You could have you know the seven to twelve year old audience locked up one hundred percent. Yeah, but they don't and spend any money. They, they don't. And what the most important demographic, and they, they say it over and over and over again, is eighteen to like 45, 49. Male. Male. Right. Because we're the ones who spend stupid amounts of money on stupid crap. Yes. And some of it is high end crap. We like to buy stupid ass cars. You make your living on stupid crap. I do. <laughs> and so you know, and that's why I choose to do some very specific advertising for myself on cable's number one rated TV show. You mean The but, Walking Dead? Yeah. So I think that's the thing to keep in mind is it's doing eh numbers, but I believe it's doing really good numbers in that demographic. Right. And that demographic is more important than what the numbers are currently showing. Agree. Walking Dead, um, caught up on that. I thought it was really good. Uh, it was, it's one of those things I like it a lot more than, than last season. And I like the drama. I really like the fact that they, they ramp up like the, the sickness thing that was happening. But on the other hand, I get it feels like BBC television 
where something is drawn out and, and seems longer and bigger than what it is. And then I, I kind of miss the American kind of television when it comes to just get it over with already, okay? Right. They're sick. Either have them all live, have them all die, figure it out. But it was like four episodes, I want to say, yeah. of them starting to get sick to these guys just showed up. And that means the next episode we're going to have the aftermath of, you know, the last bits of medicine and whatnot going out there. So well, we are talking about like a 16-episode uh, series now, or season now, as sure. opposed to, you know, we've had six and 11. So. Sam and Dean would have showed up, killed the demon that was causing this thing and been out in 42 <laughs> minutes. So I'm just saying that there's definitely a formula that yeah. isn't being used, which helps ramp up the drama. Right. But on the other hand, I mean, and we all called this. Every Everybody called it. How many people did we add to the cast? Doesn't matter, because I think we're almost back down to the normal number now. Yeah, I would say, is there two two that are, like, going to be regulars? The, uh, the army medic dude that's the drunk, maybe? And uh, and I guess there's some more coming uh, that we haven't, haven't met yet. All right. Um, so... But, I mean, we, we added, like, a huge cast right. just so that we'd have a reason to just start. They hardly the named any of them, though. No. You know, they, it was like, they it could have been red shirt one, oh, two, right. three, four. Die. Right, yeah. <laughs> so. Why bother? Um, and I'm happy. I was worried about Herschel this uh, this episode because it was so Herschel-centric. Sure. Been, and I thought, oh, man, this is one of those where they were giving him giving him some legs. Some and, goodbye. And he's going to be on his way. <laughs> They're going to put know? his face on the credits for the opening scene right. just to whack him. But, no, at the end, he's they, like, you're a tough old guy. He's like, yeah, I am. And, you know, he just, just moved on. So that was and, that was pretty cool. And I'm a little surprised because he had, um, I think it was a year or two ago, he had a, a DUI. Oh, yeah. Which, I mean, is outside life. But Lost had a couple of guys get DUIs. And it was like, see ya. Yeah. You know, and they, the AMC is stuck by this guy. You know, he made this one little mistake or whatever. And instead of kicking him to the curb, which wouldn't have hurt him, let's face it. I mean, Herschel's an interesting character, but anybody could become the heart and soul of the group. Glenn is very well positioned to be that guy if they wanted him. Dale yeah. was that guy, yeah. and for whatever reason, they chose to ice him. So, really well done. Zombies are looking amazing, as usual. Carl's coming along in a way that I'm really enjoying. I like that relationship. That, that relationship is reminding me so much of the batman Damien relationship, uh, you know, before he died. Um, because there's just so much banter between, or even just the looks in between, as they're in the middle of something that they should be completely concentrating on right now, but they st you still see those moments in between them. Uh, it, was, it was just really cool. Well, and I think we're getting away from season one and two. When Carl, get in the house. Guess where Carl is this season? <laughs> Carl's ass is wherever he's told to be for right now. He hasn't been screwed around too much. He's now it's Carl, throw me a clip. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was like, damn. <laughs> and, I mean, but they even played that up. Like, we started yeah. off, he couldn't have a gun. He got right. his gun back. Right. And now he's uh, evolved into, mach you know, machine guns. Right. So. so that was pretty cool. April wants to talk about comics because she keeps doing this. I, All right. I was trying you got, to you got, you got one like, minute and five seconds. I want to talk we about something some that made money. Books. Okay, go. This doesn't make you money. It makes me money. It doesn't make the world money. Well, okay, whatever. What's your favorite of uh, all the whole uh, stack? My favorite of this, well, this. That was creepy. What's it called? That was creepy. Wraith. Okay. Wraith. Wraith. Yeah, which is actually the car. Oh. So. Remember the movie, The Car? Yeah. But anyway, this is cool. Check it out. That's it? Wow. <laughs> you know what? They can, they can edit all the other crap I just said. They can take the whole PS3 straight out. He's got the ability. And do like a little Sean spouts off about PS3. Now, what you need to know about The Wraith is it's by Joe Hill. I think it's just Wraith. Yes. Joe Hill is? The guy from Lock and Key? Yes. The son of Stephen King. Oh, okay. Sure. Um, also a best-selling novelist. This is a like two or weeks or so. Or yeah, he's, he's got a new novel out, which is based on this character, Nosferatu. And so I've seen that book. Yeah, so that's how. This is kind of the origin of the character, and it's super creepy. I mean, but really so well hardcore. Done. Like, as I'm, I read 15 comics yesterday before coming to work to try and catch up on some stuff, and this was like towards the end. Mm -hmm. By far the densest book. I mean, I read, I read Walking Dead, the new Walking Dead. Read it in four minutes. Mm -hmm. Just like boom, done. Right. There's nothing to it. This very wordy. is very wordy. Yes. But the thing is, is it's but you want to good. take your time with it because the, it's absolutely good. the art. Well, not traditional comic art is funny, or not funny. It's really, it's just really good. The whole thing just creepy, scary. You can tell that the it's writing, like Halloween meets Christmas, but not in the fun, Stephen cool way. It's nasty <laughs> and wrong yeah. and evil but and in a good bad. Way. Yeah, I like mean, don't read it at one o'clock in the morning. No. Yeah, it's, it's just really well done. I highly <laughs> recommend I'm going to probably check out the book based on this. Writing screwed up, creepy, scary crap runs genetically in that family. Sure. Because this, he's kind of like a vampire. 
deals with children, it, the whole thing. Uh, the, Christmas I mean, it, land. You, I wouldn't let a child get a hold of this. No. Scene. At least there is a very graphic scene in there, or, or sorry, alludes to um, something that would be very disturbing to a lot of people. It's disturbing so, to me. I'm forty something. I mean, well, it's it's creepy. So I'm Superman, saying, Wonder Woman, big crossover. It was very good. Was it good? Yes. What was the highlight? It's because this is it sold out. Well, so they, I have not they, actually they read kind of give you a little bit of a hint into the, the new 52's uh, origin of... They kind of changed the origin of, of Doomsday. Superman meets a family. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and then Superman meets uh, a few of uh, Diana's... Amazons? And it doesn't, it doesn't go well for some type. people. I'll just, yeah. <laughs> I'll just say that. Oh, yeah, they threw him into the sun. He's like... Just give it away. Nothing with her. Spoiler, <laughs> screw it! Injustice is actually based on a video game, which was a launch title for the PS4. It's basically Street Fighter for superheroes with villains in it. It's all DC based. So, and you said this is like the most juvenile of what I read. Okay. Yeah, but I like. Um, well, this is not DC New Fifty Two continuity. This right. is outside of normal continuity. And I gotta say, I've read a couple of them. I've loved it. Yeah. This is really. This I, it was fun, and I really like Harley Quinn. So oh yeah. That, Number zero yeah. of Harley Quinn comes out next week. Okay. So we've got a bunch of them coming. Manifest Destiny was the book that I had the most hope for. Yeah. This is the book I wanted to be the big book, and it's and good, I sense that you're but it's not great. I tried, well, I tried to read it, and I couldn't read it. It's like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I went into it expecting it to be the most right. awesome thing. It's a great concept. It's Lewis like and Clark the- going across the Louisiana Purchase, but instead you find out that the president and the government seems to know that there are some supernatural, screwed-up stuff right. out there on them, their planes, and these guys are actually being sent to deal... There's a buffalo man in them, their plane. Yeah, not to, <laughs> not to keep, you know... Given CW all love, but it's yeah. like Sam and Dean as right. explorers in the old frontier, mm-hmm. and it starts off pretty normal. It's got a lot of potential. You really right. should check it out, and try to get through it. Our, but unfortunately, quality. yeah. Quality. Marvel yeah. Knights X Men was a brand new X Men book. It's like a murder mystery featuring the X Men in hillbilly country. Little Deliverance meets them. Not that big a fan. Noir. You take my books every time you do this. So sorry. So, oh, <laughs> she paid for those. So sorry. I did. Here. What? Oh, you got your copy. I got my copy. Sure I'm Nor was probably my, my big surprise of the week. They've been, okay. IDW's here has been doing, oh. or Dynamite, I apologize, IDW. Dynamite's been doing a lot of the Shadow, the Green Hornet, these great pulp characters, and they've been okay. Some have been really good, some have been okay. This one was really, really good. You get in one issue a full story, beginning, a middle, and ending. You get two characters, and at the very end, it's kind of like a team-up book. So the first one's about the shadow and this Black Sparrow character. At the very end, um, like Miss Fury or somebody shows up who's a different character, and that's going to obviously be the next episode mm-hmm. issue. That was pretty good, Manifest Destiny. Superior Spider-Man, Rogues, it's all good stuff. Protocol Orphans, good story, funky concept, CIA agents, that kind of stuff, but they keep calling their control dad. And they um, want to make dad happy. And it, and it does have like that weird kind of funky vibe of dad. There are you know, orphans and all this stuff. So you get the idea. But they say that the word dad, it's got to be like 20 or 30 times in this book. It actually got to the point where every time I saw it, I, I started to just sigh inwardly. Like, oh, God, God. Walking Dead, good little book. But man, so short. It's just like, boom, done. And then Avengers Arena has been really good. It's the Hunger Games in the Marvel Universe for their young tween and teenage characters, young 20s even, killing each other in an island. Are people actually dying in that book? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but then they keep coming back, and some are dead, some aren't dead. Yeah. So we'll see how many are actually dead at the end of this thing. It should be coming to an end soon. Two or three appear to be very dead, and a couple, as I said, have come back. One guy got blown up in the very first issue. Coffin Hill, new Vertigo book. Good, but just it, I got to I've got to read it again. Well, that's, very that's complicated. That's kind of what you thought last on the first one. It's still very complicated. <laughs> one of the most complicated books I've read. Okay. So that's that. Hey, what else you got? Uh, my only other comic note was uh, this month, week you had that uh, X Men Gold, mm. which was the 50th anniversary of of the X Men. Really understated, really underplayed because I didn't. Other than seeing that book and you giving it to me, had no idea that it was the 50th anniversary of the X. That's a big deal. It was, and, and it was a big price tag too. Yeah, it was a thick book. had had some good stories in it. They they really went the extra mile to get some great creators for it, people who were classic X Men creators. But uh, then they they fell short in a lot of too. Like the the first story is Chris Claremont. Okay, some arguably you know 
responsible he's, for, he's for the, the X guy. For the, for he the, is more known for the X Men than Stanley is. Taking it, yeah, taking it to to a completely different level, making it a, a huge franchise yep. in every single way. But Chris Cram, Claremont writes a story, and they get this guy, whoever the guy that's due to the art was awful. And not only was he not that good, but and that is my favorite. That is my golden age of the X Men. Right. That is the best characters mm-hmm. stories for me personally. That very first show, I was shocked when I saw the time period and who was in, right. in the jet. I'm like, right. holy cow, this is the X-Men that I love. Right. Why didn't you get Paul Smith, the artist, yeah. who originally did those stories, or even, who is still a kick-ass artist? Or even John Byrne, you know? There's no Byrne. People no who, Byrne, no Smith, no Lee. None crazy. of the... They had all the big writer names. Right. I don't know that they had any of the big artist names. Maybe just the, the Simonsons uh, doing... Yeah, okay. But, but still, they, and there were several stories in the book. Uh, the Stan Lee story was awesome because it was exactly you could just hear Stan Lee. I read it in Stan Lee's voice. Okay, I could hear that in my in. Uh, now, in which one was his? His was the the Danger Room. Sequence. Yeah, the, the okay. racing to get the day. Yeah, that sounded just like a that sounded and like that a was, 1960s comic. Yes, it, it was. It was, it was it, it, you're right. It, it felt just like that. Yeah. Um, the other, some of the other stories were okay. And uh, I really enjoyed the Wolverine and the issue awesome. 94 yeah. giant size yeah. era where he's sizing up. It's Wolverine like sitting with all these new guys. They're getting ready to go do the big mission where they introduce all the new X-Men. It's Wolverine mentally just like, here's how I'm going to take out that guy, and here's how I'm going to kill that guy, and if that one gets mouthy with me, well, I'll just, I'll just poke him in the eye. <laughs> and just great stuff. So, and then he gets, finally, the storm pops up. Because he didn't even talk about her because she was a woman. Right. And she's like, he's like, oh, crap. There's only one person that could give me a hard time here, and that's going to be her. But, yeah. Oh, but then I know how to do that, too. Yeah. So, but good stuff overall. I, I liked it. It is pricey, but pick it up. It's good. It's definitely it worth is. it. Um, I better than I, that Marvel Knights X-Men. I oh, yeah. That. Much, much better. So. Yeah. All right. Well. We're, we're over way on time, but I said he'll yeah, just edit out like, a bunch of crap. <laughs> mostly you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, this has been Geek Storm in the lovely downtown Kokomo at Pepper Whistle. Pepper Whistle. Pioneer Awards. Well, they yeah. won a Pioneer Award. They were winners. Yep. Yeah. I'm Sean Hilton. I own Comics Cube. Check us out.